It is amazing how easily we as human beings can handicap ourselves. I mean, this body is meant to deteriorate with time, but as it does, our body will give us a problem and we'll sometimes latch onto it and then we'll make decisions that we can't rehabilitate or we can't come back from this or it's, or it's the end. And all too often, these beliefs are far more premature than our body's actually ready for. And what we do is we deteriorate our own life by choice, not by our actual body's process. Check out this breakthrough I did with Ray at one of my recent events where he said, I don't believe I'm capable of recovering. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm mentoring you and I'm working with you, we, we, we can't afford any of that garbage. See what happens to Ray. This conference has been absolutely phenomenal. I've had uh, 15 years of poor health, and I'm tired of it and ready to give it up. Yes! Oh! I absolutely loved your, your teaching of the, the law of faith and the law of intuition this morning, and it resonated with me immensely. I have to develop the belief structure first before I can promote the faith that's necessary to drive the action, but I'm committed to it. Are you an oracle? It. I am an oracle. <laughs> There's nothing else you need to create other than what we're about to in the next 10 minutes for you to have your miracle set in motion. Beautiful. Are you okay with that? I'm absolutely <laughs> phenomenal with that. Okay, good, wonderful. So tell us about some of your health concerns. What's been happening? I was diagnosed with gastroparesis. That means delayed gastric emptying. That means it saps all your energy because you don't digest your food appropriately. Mm. After about five years of that, it turned into chronic fatigue, which turned into a host of other dominoes that have affected me. I've been to uh, 20 different physicians, spent two weeks at Mayo Clinic, and I finally decided that medicine didn't have the answer. I've been turning inward and seeking answers, and I'm now ready to find solutions. Come on up here. So, I just want to lovingly share something with you, and it's kind of up to you how you interpret this. I want to suggest that chronic fatigue is a fake disease. Doctors don't think so, but I'm beginning to wonder. All right. Well, we're going to have some fun right now, shall we? Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And as Ray goes through this experience, in a moment, I'm going to be putting Ray, I'm going to give him the opportunity to walk on some broken glass barefoot. And tonight, we're actually gonna give every one of you in this room this opportunity. It's not about walking on glass, though, is it? It's actually about breaking through your next limiting belief getting in your way. So as I have this experience with Ray, with all of us connected as one, here's my invitation. What is the number one limiting belief right now that is getting in your way the breakthrough that you need for going to your next level? Get present with that. Let's put words to this limiting belief that comes up when you have this thought about your health. In the last 15 years, a growing story. It grew on me until I believed I couldn't recover. Yeah. I'm not capable of recovering. Okay. When you have the thought, I'm not capable of recovering, I want to go back first memory that comes to mind for you when you have the thought, I can't recover from this. My mother, who suffered a similar ailment. Yeah, so you had a little bit, of an element of proof in your life. Your mother had a similar ailment, and I want you to go back to a specific memory with your mom when you, sh when you saw her give in to it. Well, that's the thing. She didn't give into it. She was a member of that generation that plowed through no matter what. And what and happened? She lived her life the way it was intended despite the ailment. Yeah. And yet, as you think about that memory with your mom, why are you different? What did you walk away believing? 
I, I don't know what I walked away believing. I know I feel a lot of guilt because I can't do the same. Mm. Is guilt a powerful emotion? Can it debilitate? For how long? Forever. Right. So I want to invite you right now, ready to just to hone in on this guilt. What is the belief behind the guilt that says, I can't do what my mom did? I'm not strong enough. I don't have the faith. I don't have the power that she did. Okay, perfect. So by the way, if you have any kind of physical ailment, any kind of health condition and concern, and if you, no matter how small or big it is, believe that you don't have the faith to overcome it, you don't have the power to overcome it, and you don't have the strength to overcome it, then what must inevitably happen? You give power to it, and it gets to win. How many of you can think of a, a health ailment in your life that you have given power to? and you believe that that circumstance is stronger than you, Ray, open your eyes and look at this. Keep your hand up. I want, do you mind if I share a couple things from my life? Please. So, um, I've, I've had a chance to witness some amazing physical healings in my body. And um, I remember when I, when I was 13 years old, I turned teenager. And all of a sudden, when the temperatures would change in the state of Washington from hot to cold, my body would have this very wild reaction of hives. And these hives would break out all over my body. And I remember the first time being um, at the hospital, and they did not know what to do. And uh, if anyone here has ever had really nasty hives, rave bumps all over your body, and they just itch like crazy, if you've ever had that, like, it's just almost maddening, and you got to find some way to not itch just long enough to see if they'll go away. And um, from that point moving forward into my teenage life, I just thought that this was something I had to have because it would always show up at the change of the seasons. And I remember when I got married, and you know, they talk about when you go to college, you put on the freshman 15. When I got married, I was putting on the 15, the, fr the, the newly married 15. And um, I remember it was winter, and I thought, I want to get to the gym, and I want to do something. So I got a gym membership, newly married. I go to the gym, get on that treadmill, and within 60 seconds, in the hives broken all over my body. And I thought, well, I've had it for all these years. This is the way that it is. Have any of you ever caved into some of your physical ailments? Then I got a mentor that challenged me, and he said, your hives are a fake disease. And I kind of wanted to punch him. <laughs> Thanks for not punching me. And he taught me this principle of having faith to be whole. And he would say, get on the treadmill, and as you work out, in your mind, believe nothing more than you are whole. And I got on that treadmill, and I lasted about a minute, and the hives got the best of me, and I thought, this is probably bogus. But the next day I got on, and I really put this energy into my wholeness. And I went an entire minute before the hives showed up. And then they did, and I got off the machine after two minutes. And the next day I thought, you know what? I bet I can get another minute. I got two minutes, because who decided that? And then the hives came back, and five minutes and 10 minutes, and before you know it, I could run 30 minutes. And a time came when I just thought, you know, maybe hives don't serve me anymore. And I've never had them again. I could share so many. In life, we have to decide whether, which circumstances are greater than us. And here's one I would invite all of us to try on, which is you are greater than any circumstance. There's not one circumstance on the planet that is greater than you. You have dominion and power over all circumstance through the power of choice. So, not enough strength. It changed my whole personality. Yeah. The doctor went through my life and took everything out except what was most important and he, the doctor had me to find that and I said that's providing for my family. So I've been limping through work. 
coming home, collapsing, limping through work again, and I was a type A personality that was involved in everything, and it's just stripped who I was, and I feel self-defeat. Would you like to get it back? I, I, I long for nothing else. Ray, I believe, I have faith that you can absolutely get your life back, and I'm going to share with you where that faith is going to start. If you safe harbor not strong enough, not powerful enough, and as a result, I feel guilty because I couldn't even do what my mom did because it was her generation's thing. If you safe harbor that, your body will remain debilitated because it has permission to. The only way you can step through it begins with the space that says the only thing I see is my wholeness. The only thing I validate, the only thing I perceive is that I am strong, that I am healthy, and that I am whole. Those are the words that I would encourage you to try on. So here's what I'd like to do. Close your eyes. First memory that comes up for you, specific memory when you have the thought, I don't have the strength, I don't have the power. Failure. First memory that comes up, how old are you? The first memory is of my children all being teenagers and not being able to go on scout camps with my sons. So let's just take it right there. And as you decided that with your health condition that you couldn't go on scout camp, what did you decide about yourself? Well, I was an avid scouter at the time and I had been on scores of camp outs and this was completely foreign waters to me. I just knew how I felt and I guess I validated my feelings because I attempted a scout camp or two when I was feeling that way, and I just totally, I totally crashed for, for a week or two. Yeah. And what did you decide after that crash? That I didn't want to crash anymore. I needed to stay in the workforce and support my family. What else did you decide? Decided that I couldn't do it, that I didn't have the capacity to go on scout camps anymore, and that led to another thing and another thing and another thing until I met all these doctors and they're validating my beliefs from a medical perspective and yeah. I believe it more and more. Yeah, and Friends, here's the thing that I want to teach you about the body. Does our body sometimes need to rest? If our body starts speaking to us and we don't listen, what'll happen? It can, all sorts of things can happen, right? It can shut down. We can have breathing problems. The body can manifest just about everything, but here's my experience. When the body talks, what it's really expressing is what's not working where. And if we can't hear, and if we don't adjust these thoughts, then we actually give debilitating power to our body. I was on a run with some of my friends, and at mile 5.2, first time it had ever happened, my knees started hurting. So I said, guys, I'm gonna turn around. I went home, this is a few years ago. And I knew that there was a temptation to say, uh-oh, I've arrived at the age and maybe now I have bad knees. And I knew, I knew what a dangerous to even utter that. What would that do to my knees? What would my body have to do to obey me? My knees were just tired. So you know what, I listened and I said, uh-uh. I just get to love and honor my body. So I gave it a day's rest. The next morning I went running with my body, with my buddies. At 5.2 miles, guess what happened to my knees? They started hurting again. And when it happened twice, that's now a pattern, not a coincidence. And I thought, uh-oh, maybe now I have bad And I thought, no, 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 no. Poisonous language. Once you decide you got bad knees, you got bad knees for how long? Forever. So instead I said, body, what do you need? My body said, give me a couple of weeks. Took a couple of weeks off, went running back with my buddies. My knees have never hurt again. But I'll tell you something, if you give in, if you can't create space for your body to need rest or a nap, or maybe there was a time when you were working too hard, you didn't pay attention to your body, maybe you fed your body some really nasty, horrible food, maybe you were getting into food addictions and putting poisons in your body. I mean, there's all sorts of ways that we can abuse this temple. And if we don't listen and allow it to recover, then some of the temporary conditions can become what? 
permanent. Well, friends, there are some words you just won't hear me speak unless I'm training because I recognize the power of words. And the moment you get to a place where you say, I'm done, that's it. Do you know what you will have created for the rest of your life? Yeah. So, Ray, even though you have this 15-year history, I'm going to invite you to start all over again. I already have. I've made more progress on my own without medicine over the past three or four years than I ever did with medicine. So I guess I have more faith and more belief than I did then. Yes, you do. And you've made this progress. How would you like to go the rest of the way? <laughs> That's my dream. Okay, the rest of the way, the rest of your journey, it's not a year-long journey. It's not a decade-long journey. It's a journey of the mind. I'm going to invite you to take yourself all the way to a place here. That close your eyes. You've just finished the scout camp. You're absolutely drained. Your body is tired. And you're about to say... I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. Instead, be present right now with your body and just ask, body, what do you need? Rather than being judged. I think my life was too booked. It was too stressed. Mm -hmm. And it needed, it needed it needed a cleansing. It needed a period of time where it, it reset. Yeah, and guess what chronic fatigue is? It's the body saying, please stop overworking me. The only people that get chronic fatigue are your type A personalities that know how to work, sometimes maybe a little too hard, and maybe, is it true that at any point you maybe ever disrespect or dishonored your body by instead of giving it its needs by pushing too hard. Oh, absolutely. I began work at like seven years old. I've been working since. Yeah. So it's time for a new story. Rather than believing that your body has to permanently have this problem of chronic fatigue, it's time for something new. Your body's saying, give me a rest. And I want to invite you to try on some new beliefs. If you could show up today with the progress you've made in the last three or four years and go back in time and give yourself some advice, what advice would you give yourself? If I had only had the wisdom, I would have done what I'm doing now then, and I wouldn't have had the 15 years of poor health. I would have reset and pushed forward and wouldn't have had the health problems. Yeah, and I want to invite you to try on some words. These, this is my magic prescription for your body, okay? I love my body. I love my body. I am whole. I am whole. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am strong. I am strong. I am powerful. I am powerful. I listen to my body. I listen to my body. I honor my body. I honor my body. My spirit has dominion over my body. My spirit does have dominion over my body. I speak. I speak. And my body listens. And my body obeys. And I also listen to my body. And I also listen to my body. And go ahead and open your eyes. I am strong. I am strong. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am healthy. I am healthy. Let them hear it. I am healthy. How many of you know there's a breakthrough inside of you about to happen? Are you feeling it? We will be giving you some instruction on what to do. Ray's ready to claim the rest of his health. It happens present tense. It happens here in the moment. I'm going to invite you to step up here, and I'm going to give you some instruction. Walking on glass is not like walking on fire. With fire, there's, um, there's a motivation under your feet to scurry in an expeditious movement. On glass, carefully taking a step, and someone would be here at my side to help steady me. And then to finish walking across the glass. So you're going to walk carefully, 
And as you approach the glass, we've got our staff here that are gonna help you. You see the three pieces of tape? We've got three lines. I'm gonna ask you to step up to the first line right here and go ahead and, where's the microphone? Ray, go ahead and state your name. Ray Walker. What's your new belief? I am healthy. I am whole. I am powerful. My spirit has dominion over my body. Give it up for him. Let's go ahead and stop for a second. It's like walking on potato chips. <laughs> Now, 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 friends, there's some things I want to tell you about the glass. I have cut my feet walking on it. it um, there's no special recipe on how to make broken glass. You take bottles and break them, okay? And this is an optional activity, and we will get the results in the next 10 seconds on Ray, who is strong, powerful, healthy, and whole. Proceed. And as he approaches the end, our, our staff are going to help remove any friends that may want to tag along. They do clean. And let me ask you, how do you feel? I feel powerful. Friends, give it up for him. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And you are whole, and you are strong, and you are powerful. Ray, 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 Ray. Whether you're young or whether you're old, I am whole is a perfect belief for you to be reciting, rehearsing, and practicing every single day. Thank you so much for watching this breakthrough. If you know somebody that has some body elements, share this with them. Maybe it'll help them have their breakthrough. Otherwise, join my website so you can come join me for one of my next upcoming events or some of my other free breakthrough tools just for you. And if you're not already, subscribe, check out these other videos so we can help you with your next breakthrough.